I'm Morgan. And I'm Megan. Twins and host of Eminem Chat, a monthly podcast that brings together our many commonalities, motherhood, farm life, fitness, chasing our passions, and go chat. It is our goal to create a show that is positive, real, and fun. All right, you guys, welcome back. This is our last episode in our second series on creating a calm and peaceful home. We are excited to kind of finalize this conversation and um, have just a fun, casual conversation about it and some games, we'll have some hot topics, some things that we're seeing um, that are trending right now and um, just kind of give our thoughts on that. So that's where we're going today. Yeah. Um, do you want to start with the would you rather just to kick us off? Yes. Um, so would you rather, okay, so the last couple of months we've really focused on organization and being stewards of our home and how we can create calm in the messy. And so these would you rathers are supposed to be light and airy. And so Megan, would you rather dust or mop? I would rather mop. Um, dusting drives me absolutely nuts because um, I don't ever know if I should dry dust or if I should wet dust with like a natural cleaning spray or if I should use Pledge. And I just feel like dusting like comes back quickly. I mean, so does mopping, like you need to mop the floors almost weekly, but I would rather mop. And I feel like with being on a gravel road, you get a lot of dust probably. Yeah. And probably just as hard to keep up with. And it takes longer to dust. I feel like mopping, you can quickly just run through it if you use like a Swiffer. Now, if I get on my hands and knees, which I do like probably once every couple months with a rag and a bucket, because we have hardwood floors, then it takes longer. But mostly, I would probably choose mopping. I think for me, um, I... If I'm surface dusting, like, you know, okay, you guys know, y'all do it. You know, you go around the photo, you go around the, the lantern here, and then you don't actually lift anything up. That, those sort of dusting Saturdays, I don't really mind. It's when you have, when you're like, okay, it's, it's been, been a, a while. It's been a while. I should probably lift these things up, <laughs> dust underneath of it. That's where I heard this tip that you have less stuff. You have less stuff to move when you dust. Yeah. So, um. If I'm just surface dusting, probably actually dusting because mopping, um, like you said, like if you're using a Swiffer, it's not bad, but if you really want to do it, good. Um, plus Swiffers, I feel like I don't mind Swiffers, but sometimes I feel like it doesn't get the corners real good yeah. or like it really, it kind of maybe spreads it around. Yeah, does it just kind of drag yeah. the leftover hair you that the need... vacuum didn't get? Yeah, like you said, you almost need to like use your hands and knees and get a rag or you need like an actual mop that you can like squeeze out yeah. and... Um, but anyways, okay. Do you want to do the next one? Would you rather do dishes or laundry? So we've talked a lot about like laundry and dishes in the last couple episodes. And I think you all know my stance on laundry. I, w I don't mind it. So lately I've been kind of putting myself in a better situation. I watch a, a funny comedy show or something kind of like trashy like um, Siesta Key, which is just kind of like a... You don't have to think about it. No, show. it's just gossip, you know? And then it makes it like it goes by faster. Um, but otherwise, for the most part, probably dishes. I would say, mm, I would say probably dishes just because it seems to go quicker. Yeah. It doesn't take as long. Laundry, it's like, oh man, I have a mountain of clothes right here that I need to fold in. So it's just more daunting. And now that I have a dishwasher, I mentioned to you guys that a dishwasher was a lifesaver. Now I actually don't mind doing them because I'm like, oh, it's going to take half the time that it used to. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you rather, okay, this one's kind of gross. Would you rather clean up cat puke or mo? Oh, mo all the way. I love to mow, you guys. Like by the end of the season, I do get a little bone out of it and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to put the mow away. But Come spring and summer, I love to get outside, um, like wear a tank top, get my shoulders some sun, get my face some sun, my legs some sun, and I put in my or like put on my headphones and I listen to usually like three or four podcast episodes because my yard is pretty big. Um, or I switch it to music and just jam out to music, but it's my time to just kind of decompress and I love the amount of time that I'm outside. So I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm going to be outside for a few hours and just that sunlight feels so good. So mowing all day. Um, and now as far as weed eating and go, like weed whackers, whatever you guys call it, um, <laughs> I don't have one that is easy for me to start. So like we have an like a older one. And so I was just talking to my mother-in-law the other day. 
I think I might go grab one from Menards or Lowe's or something sometime because usually we use weed killer to kill around everything that we don't want to grow up in weeds like around the sheds, around the garage, um, like in our flowers, like the rocks, like no, obviously we don't want to kill the flowers, but like the rocks where we don't want weeds. Um, but sometimes like that's just annoying too to have to use spray all the time and plus like I don't want to use it more, actually it, I don't want to use more spray than I have to either. I've also heard too the more you spray it it gradually keeps going out farther mm -hmm. and so you might start with just a single path around your barn but pretty soon you have, have a like foot a foot of dirt and then when it rains it gets muddy and yeah and also um, weed eating weed whacking or whatever you want to call it <laughs> weed eating <laughs> sounds funny don't you guys think so <laughs> weed eating um, <laughs> weed, weed whacking <laughs> also looks nice it looks cleaned up like yeah it, it just has that but Edge. That curb appeal, yeah. Um, I think for me, I'd rather mow. I'll just keep that one simple. <laughs> I <laughs> like the cleanup cap. <laughs> I like the exercise if you're push mowing. Like yeah. in our old house, I would push mow. And then yeah, like you said, otherwise you're getting a tan. Mm -hmm. I'd choose that any day over cat puke. Yeah. Um, the next one is: Would you rather take out the trash or clean windows? Take out the trash. Cleaning windows is just one of those tasks that. It takes so long. And you have so, so many. Long. Trash is literally one thing. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Yeah. Trash. I mean, the, the windows is a nice... It feels good to have them done, but... With your new windows, are you... Um, did you guys get the windows that you can pull them oh, in? Yeah. That's nice, because then once you want to clean them... Then I can just clean them from the inside. Yeah, you don't even though get... they're all low level, that I should be able to clean them from the outside, too. Even though those ones are pretty high, I guess. Yeah. They go pretty high up. You want to do the last one? Yep, last one for would you rather. Would you rather clean your car or organize your pantry? Uh, I think I would rather organize my pantry because like cleaning your car, you have to get out the shop vac, you have to get out all the cleaning supplies, you have to take out the rugs, all that stuff. But I think I would feel better if my car was clean more often. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, with your car too, there's so many like little tiny spaces. It's so hard sometimes to get like inside the cup holder clean or um, like by the gear shift or different areas of your car, the vents. It's so mm -hmm. hard to get some of that area clean. Um, I highly recommend if you need a gift idea, doing a car detailing for either yourself asking for that as a gift or giving it to someone as a gift because Kyle did that as um, my Christmas gift and it was amazing. My car looked brand new. Yeah. They did a much better job than I could ever do. And it smelled good, It got he got all the dog hair out, all the dust from the gravel road, so highly recommend that as a gift. Yeah, yeah, I, that is a really good gift. Um, one time I gave Tyler a, a detailing and he traded it in for something else he needed <laughs> done on his truck, so <laughs> I think if we had endless amount of money, I guess, because he's like, this one thing needs done, like, that was more, more priority. priority, yeah, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I would love a car detail. Yeah, it's not cheap, I feel like, they're kind of expensive, but it's worth it, and if you only do it, like, once a year, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so the next one is a quote that we found, and we're really interested to see what your um, thoughts are on this topic. So if you have any comments or things, let us know below. But Megan found this trend, and it says, In 2023, a huge trend in storage and organization is going to be sustainability. And so this year, 2023, according to Brandy Larson from Home & Sort, co she's a co-founder for Home & Sort, um, organization, she says that her prediction is that in 2023, the trend will be sustainability. Now, we talk about sustainability in agriculture all the time, so I, like, hear that word a lot, but, like, what does that mean to you? I feel like when I hear the word sustainability when it comes to your home, it's, like, finding things that are going to last, finding ways to be resourceful and not waste materials. Um, sometimes I feel so bad because um, I feel like we, like Kyle will say, I just took the trash out the other day. Like, how is it full already? Um, but yeah. you think about all the stuff we buy that are in containers, like cottage cheese, yogurt, applesauce, milk, all of those are in plastic containers. Um, or even cans. Like, I have, um, a whole container out in the garage that we put, like, non vulnerables in it so we can collect them and take them somewhere. But that's soup cans, tomato sauce, like... All of the canned things, peaches, they just get piled up. And so it's like, in what ways could we be more sustainable? 
because even thinking about that, I just feel wasteful. Um, even if it is like recycled or reused sometimes, but it's still a lot of stuff that accumulates in piles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good way to describe it. Like how can you, so, yeah, sustainability is like looking at how can we protect our resources while still like being efficient. Uh, and so like, like you said, convenience a lot of times, like buying canned things or um, buying things from the grocery store. Like, so like now, okay, so another thing that we wanted to talk about and that kind of go hand in hand is this, this trending wood called homesteading. And when I think of homesteading and sustainability, like my thought immediately goes to like, well, maybe we could buy peaches and can our own peaches, or maybe we could grow peaches and can our own peaches. But then like, we gotta be realistic too. So like, what, what are some ways that you think that you could reduce your usage of like plastics or um, non-renewable resources, disposable things that are gonna go to the landfill or things like that? Like, how, what does that kind of look like for you of like to be more sustainable and then like where well, you can continue that conversation with homesteading? Yeah, I feel like to try to be more sustainable would be, for example, Kyle loves Powerade and we try to use the Powerade bottles over and over again since it's just him using them. Um, he refills them for water bottles and since he's outside all day, he'll take a cooler of water, like old Powerade bottles that have been reused and with water and he'll take them out to the field with him and so then that way he's got enough for the day and we're not just throwing those away right away when we're using them so that's one way that we've like started mm -hmm. kind that's of that sustainability idea. but um I don't know like what are your thoughts on that because <laughs> <laughs> it's like a new idea for me I guess because yeah we, I, we listened to a podcast the other day that was like about homesteading and like how so like homesteading, okay, this trendy word like homesteading, it's kind of like going back to the basics and like being reliable on yourself. So like back when we think back to our great great grandparents, they had a couple cows that they would milk, they had a pig, they had a garden, they had chickens for eggs, they had flowers that they would cut to put on their tables. They had, they would sew their own clothes and blankets and they would um, wash everything by hand. They would make their own cleaning supplies uh, out of vinegar and stuff like that. And so back in like our great, great grandparents generation, homesteading was like providing for yourself. And so when we think about like sustainability and homesteading, I don't think they completely go hand in hand, but like we can be, um, we can start to, because as a society, I heard a quote the other day that said, a country that relies on other countries to provide for them is not a, um, like a strong, like, it's, even sustainable country. Yeah, because you're not, and like someone could, something goes someone wrong. could conquer you pretty easily, because if, if they withhold things from you, you're not going to survive. So like you can't rely on other countries and stuff to solely provide all the food and stuff for you. That's like where the Ireland famish came in because of the Irish potato. They had a famine or uh, the potato blight came through, swiped up all the potatoes. Everyone suffered because that was the only thing they they pretty much grew because they imported everything else. Yeah. And back then they couldn't get things to you fast enough and stuff like that. So anyways, so like... um. Going back to though that we do rely, like we can go to the grocery store and literally have everything at our fingertips. Endless and endless of options and we noticed during COVID that supply chain issues were frustrating when you couldn't get toilet paper or couldn't get hand sanitizer or couldn't get bread or milk. So like obviously it's not, it's not um, realistic to think that all, all of a sudden we can switch to all of us being homesteaders. <laughs> no, and, and it's not even... Um, necessarily efficient for the animals to have a couple cows on your farm like you can't be a good caretaker of everything but we could shop more local so I think that's how I look at homesteading is like yeah. we could grow like Meg and I were talking about she kind of wants to start a garden where she's growing vegetables and I have my big flower field so I'm like I don't know if I really have enough time to plant vegetables too but I could get them from Megan and I could give her like flowers in exchange or like our friend Shonda, um, she sells at the farmer's market. We could support her and buy local. Uh, so I think that's kind of how I look at homesteading is like, what can we do to buy local? How can we support others in this area? Um, like even Dan and Debbie's, they have local milk. Yeah. So uh, there's things Ways that you have to really be realistic and you also can't add overwhelm to your plate. 
I agree. Um, I've been hearing a lot of people saying that they want to have their own chickens, mm -hmm. so then they can have their own eggs. And I think part of that comes to with like inflation and how everything's getting really high in prices. Um, so then people are thinking, well, if they do their own garden, then they're getting their produce for cheaper. Um, if they have their own chickens and they have like their eggs right there that they can go and get. Um, I've also heard people saying making their own bread. Oh my gosh, the good sourdough idea. trend on social media well, is like. And I was listening. <laughs> I was listening to another podcast. Um, I forget which one it was, but they were saying like how, like a lot of us buy Sarah Lee bread. And I actually had Sarah Lee bread on my counter last week. So, like, I buy it, too, sometimes. And they said, like, think about how long that bread lasts. Usually it lasts a couple weeks on your counter without getting moldy. Yeah. If you make homemade bread, it usually lasts a few days without getting moldy. And um, so that just shows how many preservatives are in that processed bread to make it last longer on the shelf and versus, like, making it homemade when it's... Just those simple ingredients. And so I One thing like, I will, can I say something yeah. about that real quick though too? Um, listening to another, so Megan and I are like podcast junkies, which is one reason why we started a podcast. Um, <laughs> but so yes, like I agree that um, preservatives, you want to make sure like you're looking at toxic things in your food or like how many ingredients there are. Like you want more whole foods, the things like like literally if you have an apple off of a tree it's just an apple so like things that are more like whole in a um, natural form natural original form but I also think like one out of three bites of food are wasted mm -hmm. like one out of three um, things from the field like pumpkins that are harvested one out of three pumpkins are gonna be wasted and so I think also the reason why um, like we were talking about the raw milk um, trend movement going on right now people a lot of people are wanting to move back to like raw milk but the reason why milk was started to be pasteurized is because they and they heat it at a really high temperature to, to kill those bacteria that could potentially be there in the next couple days now if you're drinking that raw milk from your farm and you're drinking it within a couple days if you're making bread and you're eating it within a couple days like great but don't like make bread and then in a few days you, your family didn't eat it all so it's going bad so you throw it away so like that's where I think it's got to be a balance because the bread, like the Sara Lee bread or different breads that you get from the store, they were made so that they could be shipped. You could save it on your counter for a while. You don't have to take another trip to the gas station. So I think there's a balance in everything. Mm -hmm. Like we can't just be like, well, it's a quick fix. Like we're going to make our own bread and we're going to have raw milk because you're going to end up maybe having more food waste and that's not good either. Yeah, that's a good point because there's never it's never a good idea to go extreme both ways. No. And like the reason we've had advancements is because it, they were needed at times. Yeah, and, and um, preservatives aren't always, like the yeah, I don't know a whole lot about preservatives and stuff, but like it's not, it, like it passes the FDA. So I'm not saying it's great for you, but it's also like one of those things too that we can't be fearful. And I feel like companies are starting to get pressure of making sure that they're cleaning up the products a little bit. So some companies have been doing a really good job of looking towards making the products more wholesome and less things in them that they don't need, less preservatives, less added color, less mm -hmm, added sugars. Like yeah. I feel like companies are starting to have pressure from people because as a society, we are in like a crisis, a crisis right now when it comes to like Process. diseases, but even like diseases and yeah. health and like that goes kind of back to our other series. I feel like it all is kind of, they all kind next. of go together. Um, Megan and I honestly kind of questioned this series when we first started today because we're like, are we being redundant and repetitive? But they do go well together. Yeah, they do. And I feel like you could dive so far into this topic and, um, and everyone has different opinions too on like what's best for their family and like what's sustainable to them and like, and what in the means too, like what they're able to do with what they what kind of money they have yeah and what kind of time they have what their goals are because if you don't have space for a huge garden then maybe going to the farmer's market is your best bet mm -hmm. but like I do have a pretty big yard that we're not using all yeah. of it so maybe I should put a garden out here and that would get Andrew outside that'd get us walking in the garden together give us something to do and 
Also, I think it's important for him to have that, like, knowledge, too, of, like, where his food comes from. Yeah. And it's a really good hand on Learning how to grow, because, honestly, guys, I almost killed my flower of pot. Oh, like, my flower of pot. My pot. <laughs> <laughs> my pot of flowers. I have one. One pot of flowers. And I forgot to water them for a few days. And there was four flowers in this one pot. One of them completely died. It, like, fell out yesterday. I grabbed it. And then the other three are coming back to life. So I think we all need to ha kind of go back to those roots too of like how do you even grow food or how do you grow flowers and how do you take care of them? Um, so that comes back to kind of those old ways. Yeah, and like you said, the trend of like wanting to raise your own chickens or garden and stuff like that. Uh, I think I think you're exactly right. I think people are wanting to get outside more and get off the like, computer screens and like be in the sun and be where like the door is and kind of get your hands dirty a little bit. Um, this year for my hatching program, I had the most, I usually we have to find homes for all of our chicks. I think we had to find homes for like maybe three or four classrooms. The rest of them, someone in the classroom, a parent, a teacher wanted to take the chicks home. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so that's pretty, that's just telling you right there that it's getting to be popular. Yeah. But also make sure like you do your research and stuff like that before you just like take on a big project like that. It's kind of like when people during COVID were going and adopting a dog and then they'll realize that it was like more work than they. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want to do your research on it to know um, the ins and outs of it before you just get in over your head. Yeah. All right. So um, talking a little bit about um, like what is the biggest takeaways from this series? Like what do you think you're gonna do going forward and I think creating a calm and peaceful home and like eliminating the chaos and stuff like that and the overwhelm is to me is like the last couple of months of conversation is like not striving for perfection but striving and I know like some people hate the word balance but like I don't think like you said even on this food topic we don't need to be extreme in both directions like with our house we don't need to be micro organized every area of our house spit spot clean like dust free and we don't need to be like a slob and like have everything out like I think there needs to be a middle ground where we need to feel comfortable in our house but we need to make sure it doesn't cause stress to our lives if there's something that's bothering you like we can make sure that we work on certain rooms like you don't have to tackle it all at once and then same with like even just how you act in your home, like your morning routines, your um, what you make for meals. Um, like it's not, our meals aren't going to be 100% veggie, fruit, protein at every meal. But sometimes like we can strive for that. But it's okay if it doesn't happen and not beating yourself up. I think I've been a lot better at the last couple of months with through these conversations that we have had that like give myself grace. But um, you can st still be comfortable and happy with where you're at and content and thankful and, and um, like counting your blessings from Jesus and stuff like that, but still striving because like um, in the Bible it says like, yes, God will provide for you, but you also can't stand still. Like mm -hmm. you have to, he gives you feet and hands and like gives you the um, ability. ability to be able to walk towards those things. I agree with that 100%. And I also think that one thing I've taken away from this conversation is little actions add up to the feeling of calmness or the feeling of having your home organized the way that you want to, having your task and all the things that you need to accomplish done. Um, and it's like never an end project, like you always have things that come up with your home. But one thing that I've been really implementing since we started this conversation is just doing a little things here and there. For example, starting laundry on like Thursday or Friday before the weekend hits. Um, unloading the dishwasher in the morning so that at night it's empty and when stuff was done I can just load them in and I'm not having to do both. So like setting yourself up for success. Yes, and another thing um, that I um, started doing, even very simple, is after like Andrew gets out of the bath, taking the rag that, like, that I'm done using and wiping down the bathroom um, sink or the bathtub because the ba upstairs bathroom doesn't get used and cleaned as much as the downstairs one that's where we're mostly at during the day and so just doing little things like that mm -hmm. 
I feel like it's helped a lot and it doesn't make me feel so overwhelmed on the weekend that I have so much to do. Yeah, that's a good. And then the weekend can actually somewhat be used for hanging out with family, friends, and relaxing like it's meant to be. Yes, I have felt like that has been one of my goals is to find time to have that luxury um, where you can sit back and make your home kind of your oasis and um, read a book and not feel guilty about it. And it's been very refreshing. Yeah, we don't always have to be checking something off the list, like especially for like, if you listen to um, our other episode about called What's Your Type, and it's about the Enneagram, like Megan and I are definitely like that perfectionist mindset, um, achievement, and it's hard for me to sit still, and I've been like forcing myself to like sit down and read books and stuff, and not always have to be doing something. And not having to be checking something off a list or striving for the next thing. Just being content and sitting and being where you are at. And it's been actually really refreshing um, to not yeah. feel like I have to reach another goal. I agree. Um, well, thank you guys for listening to this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know kind of your thoughts on it. Um, if you liked our series, please share it and tag us into the post on either social, like Facebook or Instagram, any of the socials that you like to use. Um, and rate us on Apple Podcasts and YouTube, um, so then that way more people can see our episodes. We're excited for the next series, um, and we'll be diving into a new topic. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.